Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Brian Shimatero, and I'm here with the Rowena Francis uh, show, uh, though I'm going to be doing it by myself solo today. And uh, as we get up and running, I want to talk to you guys about the fact that I got to grow up in what I believe is one of the most exciting eras of technology advancement that has ever occurred. It was during the late 70s and 80s that all of a sudden, you know, we had the creation of what I call the video games and the consoles. Uh, it started off with Pong and then moved into Atari and television, Coleco. All of these different gaming consoles came out and it just revolutionized the way, you know, that we approached approached, you know, video games for the most part. It was, you know, then after that, you know, they came out with another whole generation of things that took place with the Nintendos and the Segas and the Sega Genesis and then Xboxes and different types of things that now we progress into now with the Playstations. Everything now has been changed and, and it's been revolutionizing for over, you know, decade upon decade now. Through this revolution, when it first started, it also advanced a whole lot in the, in the area of personal computers. What we found about personal computers, they started off with little things such as a VIC-20. Then they went into the Commodore 64. And man, the Commodore 64 had just endless and endless types of games. Some of the best games I still think were on the Commodore 64. And eventually we moved into the Amiga and then the, the full development of the personal PC that we now see and work with today. All of these created new genres of games as they continued to grow. Uh, and we went through uh, different variations of, you know, those personal shooters, you know, that started with Duke Nukem's and Dooms and eventually led to Halo and all the other masses of shooter games that we have. But they also had a genre in there that really captured my attention. We don't see a lot of them today. But this was called a, uh, an RTS game, which is a real-time strategy. And really what happened with a real-time strategy game is that you had to build and you also had to conquer at the same time. Some of the big, uh, big names in these would have been like Command and Conquer or Age of Empires. Um, and, and the original itself was even Dune. And so when I played these games, they just, they just, they captured you, that you, you were captivated and you were just, you were brought into this world so actively that you were just doing so many different things that, you know, you, you got lost. And I love the, the, the whole military element of it, the strategy of it. You were, you know, commanding all kinds of different armies through, through, through the centuries. I mean, they went from like early, you know, early times, like in Egyptian times, all the way through to modern eras. And one of the things that I found with it that really fascinated me was that when you went through a lot of the different eras that, you know, in military purposes is that almost every army had different military units who used different types of shields. And so shields became something that just became uh, really cool to me. Not only was the decoration on them, but the design of them, the implementation of how they were utilized. Uh, there was so many different things could be accomplished in a military conquest or defense with a shield. And so why am I talking about all that today? Because one of the things that, you know, we have learned and I'm going to talk about today is that our God also has a name. And one of his names is Jehovah Majen. And you know what it means? The shield. And when I found that out, it was something that just dove me right into wanting to learn more about who he was and how he acts and functions as a shield in our lives. And so that's what I'm going to be chatting about for the next little bit. And, uh, we're going to go from there. So it says in the scriptures, and we want to take a look at Psalms 18.2. And it says in Psalms 18.1-2, uh, sorry, and Psalms 91.4. Those are two verses that I want to connect for you today. The first one says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my my God, my strength, in whom I trust, and my shield. And that, sh that word shield means a magen. And the horn of my salvation in my high tower. We've talked about some of those other names previously, but today we're talking about the shield, the word magen. And also in the second verse, which was Psalms 91.4, it said that he shall cover you with his, with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and butler. And that is also the same word magen. What I find is interesting is that the, the scriptures, although they're both current and relevant, one translates the word shield, the other translates the word butler. And, you know, we, we hear this every once in a while, you know, the Lord is my shield and my butler. Um, but they're, they're separate. But the reality is, is that they both are a type of a shield. And so 
what is the differences between these things? You know, a shield is, is something that, you know, is used often as what you call a defensive piece of armor. And it can be something used in war that, you know, can even cover your entire, entire body or structure. And so there's something that attaches, you know, generally to, to your arm. You know, it has like a, ho like a, a, a strapping type of a system in it as well. Now, when you get into the butler, these are things that are often normally a little bit smaller in size. You know, some of them are you define, and they've and they've changed a little bit over over history as well. What people refer to as a butler, but a lot of times they have what you call a point on them, and that point allows them typically is like you know when arrows and different things come, they can reflect off of them. Um, but they're also something that can be handheld uh, in a in a smaller version. And when it's a handheld thing, which is interesting, is what I like about it is, is that it can also be used as an offensive weapon. So you got this little blocking shield on your hand that, you know, is a, is a butler. It can block arrows, but you can also use it as you attack your enemy as well. And so when the Lord talks about being Jehovah Majen or shield, He's talking about a full body defense, but he's also talking about how he's a smaller defense and that defense is also used as an offensive weapon. And so the, the, the magnitude of what God is really revealing to us as a shield in our life is something that is priceless. Because when we go into war, which we are in a spiritual war, it's something that we need to be aware of each and every day. But we need to make sure that we got our back covered. We want to make sure that our sides are covered, our fronts covered. You know, God is what I call, you know, he's, he's a shield that goes all the way around us. And so he's got our back. And so he's protecting us in the midst of troubles, in the midst of adversity. And so this is something that's very important. And it's a strong attribute of the God Almighty that we serve, Jehovah Majen. And so it says in the Bible, it says, he's a shield to those who walk uprightly. That's from Proverbs 2, 7. And trust him. Uh, and, first, and, and Samuel, it says, and fear him. And what does this all tell us? It tells us that we need to have our confidence and our trust in God and, and know that he is not going to break. His shield is not going to fall apart. He's going to be there to protect us on each and every side. And so I just want to show you guys today a little bit about how you can pray in the name of Jehovah Majed. So if you just pray with me for a moment, Father God, I thank you that today you are Jehovah Majed. You are my shield. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are surrounding me, that you keep me safe this day, that you uh, that you are a hedge of protection round about myself and my family. I thank you, Lord, that as I go into battle and I follow you, that Lord, that you are that you are hedging me in on every side that you got my rear guard, you have my sides covered, Father God, and I thank you, Lord, that nothing can penetrate the shield of God as you are here with me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're my butler, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that as Jehovah my Jen, that, Father, you're also the offensive weapon that I can use in the midst of battle, that I can counterattack, Father God, as the enemy sends things my way. I thank you, Lord, that as he sends his fiery darts the enemy, Lord Jesus, that they hit that shield, and they hit, Father God, the point, Father, and I thank you, Lord, that it just deflects off. So, Lord Jesus, when things and attacks come our way this day, I thank you, Lord, that you're deflecting them to the sides. So, anyways, I thank you guys that you joined us, uh, and hopefully you learned a little bit more about the name of God today, and you guys have a great day.